Welcome to Electro Online. Here's our third example of how to find the Thevenin equivalent circuit. Now, it's a relatively simple circuit, at least it seems that way, but there's a fair amount of work to turn this into something that looks like this, where we have the Thevenin equivalent impedance and the Thevenin voltage. So, the first thing we want to do is find the Thevenin impedance. To do that, we take the voltage source and replace it by a short circuit and now we find the impedance across the terminals a and b so when we take a look at the circuit on the right notice that we have these two in parallel then connected in series to this one and then this in parallel to the capacitor all right so let's first find the impedance of the parallel branch along with the inductor so z parallel is equal to, so we'll take the product over the sum of these two, so we have 30 times 60, whoop, I'm missing a zero, divided by 30 plus 60, here we go, and then we add that to the J10, because J10 here, the, the inductor is in series with the two resistors. All right, so this is equal to 1800, divided by 90 plus J10, which is equal to 20 plus J10. All right, that gives us the impedance of these three, which are now in parallel to this right here. All right, so to find the total impedance, Z total, that is equal to the product, that would be Z parallel, multiplied times the minus J5, divided by Z parallel, plus the minus J5. So again, we're doing the product of the sum. So we take this whole thing, which is in parallel to the capacitor, so product over the sum. So this is equal to 20 plus J10 multiplied times the minus J5, and divide that by the sum of those two, that would be 20 plus J5, because minus J10, uh, J10 minus J5 is plus J5. All right, when we multiply these two, we get J times J, which is negative one times the negative plus one times 50. So we get 50 and 20 times a minus J5 is a minus J100 divided by the sum of these two, which is 20 plus J5, which is equal to, all right, now we need a calculator because we have to converge to magnitude and phase angle format. So we have uh, 10,000 plus 2,500 Take the square root of that, which is 111.8. 111.8 with a phase angle of, uh, let's see, that's negative 2. Take the inverse tangent, that's 63.435. Minus 63.435 degrees. Divided by, here we have 425. Take the square root, which is 20.616. 20.616. Good enough and the phase angle of 5 divided by 20 so 5 divided by 20 take the inverse tangent 14.036 degrees 14.036 degrees so then what we get here is the total impedance z total as seen from a b that is equal to the thevenin resist uh, thevenin impedance which is equal to 111.8 divided by 20.616, which is 5.423, with a phase angle of 63.435 negative, minus 14.036, that gives us minus 77.471 degrees. So now we have the Thevenin equivalent impedance, which can go in here, so we end up at 5. 423 with a phase angle of minus 77.471 degrees. All right, so now we need the Thevenin voltage. The Thevenin voltage can be found by finding the current through the capacitor and multiplying that times the impedance of the capacitor. So this right here, this would be the Thevenin voltage which would be equal to, if we say that this is I2, that would be I2 multiplied times the minus J5. So we have the impedance of the branch times the current through the branch. So now we need to find the current through the branch. 
To find the current through the branch, we have to go back over here and find the total current in the circuit, which means we now we have to find the impedance as seen from the source. Because to find the total current, I total, which is equal to the V of the source divided by the Z total, but Z total as seen from the source, not as seen from AB. So this is the total as seen by from the terminals AB. Now we need to find the impedance as seen from the source, from the other direction. All right, so how do we do that? So first of all, we have these two in series. And those two are in parallel and in series with the 30 ohm resistor. So first, let's find this right here. Let's call this Z1 right there, which is these two branches. So what we have here is Z1, which is equal to the product divided by the sum. So the product would be 60 times the sum of these two, which is the A5, divided by the sum of the two. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. So the sum of the two, which would be 60 plus J5. All right. So this is equal to uh, J300 divided by 60 plus J5. So we're going to have to convert that to magnitude and phase angle format. That's 3600 plus 25. Take the inverse of that, which is 60.208. So 60.208 with a phase angle of... Uh, let's see, 5 divided by 60, take the inverse tangent, 4.764, 4.764 degrees, and this can be replaced by 300 with a phase angle of 90 degrees. All right, so now we have 300 divided by 60.208, which is 4.983. 4.983 with a phase angle of 90 minus 4.764, that's 85.236. All right, so now we have the impedance of this right here. We need to add that to the 30, so now we have to reconvert that to magnitude and um, uh, real and imaginary part. So 85, take the cosine of that, times 4.983 equals, that is 0 0.414, and then plus J, take the sine of that, 85.236, the sine times 4.983, which is 4.966, 4.966. Now, we take the total impedance, so Z total as seen from the source is equal to the sum of the 30 plus the impedance that we just calculated right there. So we add 30 to that, so we end up with 30.414 plus J 4.966. Of course, since we're dividing it into the voltage, in the source voltage, we have to reconvert that back to um, magnitude and phase angle format, so 30.414 squared at plus 4.966 squared equals, take the square root, that would be equal to 30.817 with a phase angle of 4.966 divided by 30.14 30.414, take the inverse tangent, 9.273, 9.273 degrees. So now we have the impedance as seen from the source, not to find the total current, I total, that is equal to the voltage of the source, which is 120 with a phase angle of 45 degrees, divided by the total impedance as seen from the source, which is 30.817 with a phase angle of 9.273, 9.273 degrees. So this will give us the total current of the circuit. All right, so we have 120 divided by 30.817. 
oop, let me try it again, 120 divided by 30.817 equals, hmm, 120 divided by 30.817 equals, that's better, that's 3.894, 3.894 with a phase angle of 45 minus 9.273, which is 35.727. So now we need to find I2, right? We need to find the current through here, I2. So now we can set up a, volt, a current divider. So I2 equals I total times the ratio of the impedance in the other branch, which is 60, divided by the sum of the two impedances would be 60 plus J5. So this is equal to 3.894 with a phase angle of 35.727 degrees, multiply times 60 with a phase angle of zero degrees, divided by, do I have that calculated somewhere else already? Right here. So I can use that right there. So 60.208 with a phase angle of 4.764 degrees. Okay, that will give us I through the capacitor. So I2 is equal to 3.894, 3.894 times 60 divided by 60.208. That gives us 3.88, 3.88 with a phase angle of 35.727 minus 4.764, which is 30.963 degrees. Wow, we're almost there, because now we can calculate the voltage from A to B, which is the Thevenin voltage. So, voltage from A to B, which is equal to the Thevenin voltage, which is equal to I through 2 times minus J5. So, this is equal to 3.88 with a phase angle of 30.963 degrees, multiplied times a 5 with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees. All right, so this is equal to 3.88 times 5, which is 19.4 with a phase angle of, uh, let's see here, 30.963 minus 90, that would be minus 59.037 degrees. And that is a Thevenin voltage of the equivalent Thevenin circuit, which goes in here. So we end up at 19.4 with a phase angle of minus 59.037 degrees. And that's of course in volts. And so you can see that even relatively simple circuits can take quite a bit of work to find the Thevenin equivalent circuit. To find the Thevenin impedance, it's usually not that bad because we get rid of all the sources, we simply calculate the impedance of what's left. But then once we put the source back in and now we find the Thevenin voltage, it usually requires us to find the currents through all the branches. To do that, we need to find the impedance on the various branches, the total impedance, and then to divide the, what we did here, uh, no, not divide, but multiply the current times the impedance through the branch uh, that parallels the terminals A and B, and that is how it's done. Let's see if that one is correct. That was a lot of calculations. So, finally we end up with the voltage of 19.385, close enough, and minus 59 degrees. There it is, it is correct. <laughs>